What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and today we had a bullish day in the stock market and we're finally seeing the Dow Jones joining the bullish rally. This is great news for the summer bull rally that I've been predicting, so stay a bull in a bull market and continue to be objective. First up, let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, so our first trading day of July was bullish and we see SPY going up 0.55% today and closing over our price target at 430. Now remember, when we close over a price target, we never wanna get overly bullish of a breakout because there's always a chance that's a little bit of a throw over due to short covering. Now I will tell you, there's still a ton of people short selling the S&P 500 and we still have bullish price action and a strong bullish trend. So I still do think that we are going to see a potential blow off top or at least a parabolic rally in the very near future when these short sellers finally cover. So right now, as long as we're over SPY 430, those shorts are under pressure and we continue to see more shorts entering, which is trying to call a top. Remember, I always say don't try to be a hero by calling a top in a bull market. It's just simply not worth it. And you're much better off looking for bullish trades while you're in a bull market. Trade with the direction of the trend and there's no reason to try to short a top. If you could successfully call a top, then you're the best trader in the world. Think about that for a second. Not even the best traders in the world can successfully call a top, so don't even bother trying. Right now, as long as SPY is over 430, our next price target is all the way up here at 436. From today's close up to the next price target is about a 1.3% move to the upside, and that will easily trigger more short squeezes, which could trigger a parabolic blow off top. Right now, we don't have a blow off top. I'm just saying it could happen if we see FOMO and short squeezing at the same exact time. Watch the volume because in a blow off top, you should see increasing volume and we will go into that parabolic rally if we do see a blow off top. So right now, your critical support levels on SPY are still going to be 427, 425 and the gap close at 424. As you can tell, these critical support levels keep getting higher and higher each and every day that we continue to go higher. That's why you don't want to average down on short positions because the stock market continues to climb higher, so do those support levels. So even if we do start getting a pullback, we might get a pullback back to 427, but you started shorting back at 425 and you're still underwater in that position. So don't average down on short positions. Eventually you have to realize you're in a losing trade and you're in a trade that is against the trend and you could lose all of your money. So don't be that guy blowing up your account just because of a pride issue. Be objective and look at the price action in the trend. If you're being objective and you're looking at the chart of SPY and you're looking at the chart of the triple Qs, you can't say that the market isn't bullish. The price action and the trend are bullish and all of that noise about negative divergences and all this other things people are trying to talk about to scare you out of this market are not stopping this market from going higher. So you can either be objective and follow the price action and the trend or you can go listen to all of that noise and continue to lose money on short selling a bull market. So watch those critical supports because that 20 simple moving average is now at the gap at 424 and each and every day that goes by that critical support level continues to go higher. So even if we do see a pullback, there's no guarantee it's going to be of any significant amount. Jumping over to the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, we went up 0.04% today, so pretty much going absolutely nowhere, but we did see the price action closing back over the 5 EMA and we still have one of the best bull trends you're ever going to see. All of these moving averages have great separation and they're all very strongly trending to the upward direction. That's going to continue to push the price action higher and our critical support level is now getting into that 346 level. So our critical support continues to go higher as the price action and the trend continue to push higher as well. Remember that we now have four price action closes above our price target at 353 and our next price targets above are 359 and 361. So from today's close to our next price target is about a 1.2% move to the upside, which can easily start triggering the short squeezes. The NASDAQ 100 and the tech sector in general are by far looking the strongest, and I do expect to see the bull rally in the summer favoring the tech and the growth stocks. So watch the triple Qs and watch those price targets above because those are going to be where we're going to find the next resistance. Until we get to the next resistance, don't expect to see any significant moves to the downside. Any pullbacks can now find support at 353, our 13 EMA around 349, and our support level around 346. Again, trade with the direction of the trend and acknowledge that this market is bullish and stay objective. The price action and the trend in the triple Qs are extremely bullish. I am talking about one of the strongest bull trends I've seen since August of 2020. So this is a very strong market and it's not a market you wanna walk in front of as a short seller because you're going to get ran over by the bullish train. On the Dow Jones, we went up 0.41% today, which is a bullish indication because I've been saying I want to see strength returning to the financial sector and the industrial sector to signal a strong bull rally in the summer. 
Right on cue, we see the Dow Jones continuing to go higher, and the Dow Jones has now reclaimed the full bull trend. The 13 EMA is back over that 20 simple moving average, and our 50 EMA is back to a positive slope, and we're back in trend mode. So the Dow Jones is going bullish at the same exact time that we needed to see it happening to push the S&P 500 higher. Remember, if the financials, the industrials, and the tech sector are all going bullish together, that's going to add some real bullish juice to the S&P 500, and we could easily get to our next price target at SPY 436. So on the Dow Jones, we blasted through that resistance level at 345, and our next resistance is 348, and above that, we're retesting all-time highs at 350. Your critical support on the Dow Jones is going to be 343 and our 50 EMA at 341. On the Russell 2000, we're up 0.88% today and we see the Russell 2000 closing back over the 5 EMA and the Russell 2000 is just one day away from having a full bull trend. So we'll now have a full bull trend in the S&P 500, NASDAQ 100, the Dow Jones, and the Russell 2000. That goes hand in hand with a bull market because you want to see all of the indices bullishly trending together. That's exactly what we're about to see going into July and I do expect to see July as a very bullish month. So watch the Russell 2000 very closely because it looks like it is ready to start breaking out. It's been in a very long sideways consolidation, which means it has a ton of energy to release to either the up direction or the down direction, and it does look like it is going to be to the up direction. Watch for support at 230 and the 20 simple moving average at 229, and below that we could be coming back down to our support level at 227. Upside resistance levels will be 233, 234, and above that we're going to brand new all-time highs with a price target of 237. On the ARK ETF, we did see a cool off today going down 1.24%, which is no surprise after those stocks have been on a monster run as of lately. So expect to see a little bit of weakness and a little bit of cooling down in the ARK ETF, and we still do have a gap to fill at 126.4. So I do expect to see the ARK ETF cooling down a little bit, but obviously that's subject to change if we do start seeing a bullish rally in stocks like Tesla. Look for upside resistance right around 130, and above that we'll have resistance at 135. Downside support will be the gap fill at 126.4 and the support trend line right around 123. Below that, our critical support is still 120. And do remember that RK is now in the full bull trend, so you can buy the dip on this ETF. But try to buy on support levels, and I would wait for that gap close just to be certain. On the VIX, which is our fear indicator, we see the VIX going down over 2%, and we continue to see fear leaving this market. Remember, a low VIX is a bullish indication that we're going to continue to march to all time highs. So watch the VIX because right now it's bullish, but if we do start spiking above 18 and 20, that could signal that we're due for a correction. But right now we're just not seeing that and the VIX is telling us to remain bullish at this time. On the US dollar, we did form a higher high and we do have the full bull trend. Remember that if you're trading gold and silver, you want to keep an eye on the US dollar. What I would be watching for here is to see if this bullish rally is sustainable or if it's just a temporary bounce until we continue lower. So watch the dollar at these levels to see if it's going to gain traction or start rolling over. On gold, we still don't see any overreaction to the strength in the dollar, which is actually a bullish indication, and it could mean that the gold and silver traders don't trust the rally in the dollar. Right now, we're at that resistance level at 1776 with support at 1761. Below 1761, we could be coming back down to the support level at 1686. Upside resistance is going to be right around 1814, and our resistance level right around 1829. On silver, we had a little bit of cool off today, getting back down to the 5 EMA, and we still have support at 25.78. Below that support, we'll be looking for support at 25.1, with upside resistance at 26.5 and 26.7. On Bitcoin, we're currently down a little over 4%, but it does look like we're finding support at that $33,000 support level. If Bitcoin can stay over $33,000, we could try to form a higher low and then potentially try to put in a higher high. So right now, look for Bitcoin to try to bounce off $33,000, break back above 36,000 resistance, and then get back above 39,000. If Bitcoin starts breaking below 33,000, you're looking for support levels off 30,000 and 27,000. Remember, 30,000 is our bullish support level as long as we're above that support. We want to remain bullish on Bitcoin because that's bullish price action. So far, we still have a double bottom look, so I want to give benefit of the doubt to the Bitcoin bulls who showed up at 30,000 because not being able to break through a key support level is always a bullish indication. So look for Bitcoin to try to stay above the support level before it tries to bounce and make another leg higher. On Amazon, we were down 0.21% today and we closed right on top of that support level right around 3430. Below this support level, we still have strong support at 3400 and you can now see the 20 simple moving average is starting to get near the price action, which is going to help push the price action higher. On Amazon, I'm looking for a break above 3500 and then a price target of 3552. Above 3552, Amazon could really start running and it could get as high as 3800 or higher. 
So I'm still extremely bullish on Amazon. And if you've been looking for an entry on Amazon, this dip is probably your opportunity. Once this stock starts running, it's going to do exactly what Facebook and Nvidia did. And I am very bullish on Amazon stock at these levels. On Tesla stock, we were down about a quarter percent and we still see the price action closing over the five EMA. We're in a consolidation bull flag look with a gap down here right around 659. So the question on Tesla after this bullish breakout is are we going to close the gap at 659 and then break out above 692? Or are we going to continue to bull flag at these levels and then break out and start running? So look for a potential breakdown below about 671 and below that we're very likely closing the gap at 659. Above 692 we're going to get to 715 in a flash and above that we should start running to about 765. So Tesla is starting to look a lot more bullish and you can see that 20 simple moving average is starting to slope back up. And once it crosses back over the 50 EMA, Tesla will be in a full bull trend. So look for strong support at 659 and right around 644 with strong resistance around 692 and 715. Above 715, there's very little resistance and Tesla will start running. On Apple stock, we were up about a quarter percent today and Apple continues to hit that price target right around 137. Look for Apple to try to break out and get back into the 140s because we still have a very strong bull trend. Apple is a very strong stock that moves the market and while we're seeing Apple in this strong of a bull trend, you really can't be bearish because Apple stock is a great indication of the health of the market. So as Apple continues to push higher, look for the rest of the market to go higher as well. Apple now has support at 135 and our breakout level right around 132. On the financial sector, we were up about 0.79% and we see the financial sector closing back over the 20 simple moving average. This is a great indication for the bulls because a strong financial sector should help push the S&P 500 higher. On the industrial sector, we were up 0.71% today and closing back over that 20 simple moving average. Again, this is great news for the S&P 500 because a strong financial sector with a strong industrial sector, all mixed in with a strong tech sector, is really going to add juice to the S&P 500 and help push it even higher. On the healthcare sector, we had a bullish day today going up 0.89%, closing well above the 5 EMA and still holding on to the strong bull trend. The healthcare sector looks like it's ready to start trending in a bullish direction. On the energy sector, we are up 1.74% today and very close to closing back over that 20 simple moving average. As you can tell, a lot of these sectors are looking a lot more bullish and that's great news for the S&P 500. So jumping back over to the S&P 500, you can definitely see a lot more very bullish developments. We're seeing strength in the financials and the industrials at the same time that we see strong tech sector. Those are the three sectors that are going to continue to add fuel to the fire and push the S&P 500 higher. So look for SPY to start marching towards 436 as long as we can stay above 430. You still have plenty of critical support levels just below and this bull market looks like it's just getting started. Remember, this is going to be a bullish summer rally and there's no reason to try to call a top. We can continue to break higher and I still have price targets that take us well beyond the 436 level. So play it day by day and follow the price action and follow the trend. I can't stress it enough that it's so critical to stay objective and follow the price action. If you've been following the price action and the trend this entire time, there's no way that you would be shorting this market. There's simply no indication with this market that it's time to call a top and it's time to try shorting. Remember, shorting is a very difficult thing to do and you're going against the trend. Trade with the trend and you will be a much more profitable trader and there's still a ton of great trades to be made in this market. On the Stocks Channel Discord, we have a ton of trade ideas and we're absolutely crushing this market. If you're interested in joining the Discord server, you can find out how to join below. And I'm also doing intraday updates and analysis to always help you navigate this market and stay on the right side of the trade. I also launched my trade alert service that only trades the TQQs and it's called Bank Trade Alerts. All of the buy and sell alerts are sent directly to you via email and text message. And it's a very simple system to follow. You can find out all of the details about the bank system in the description below. So remember to stay a bull in a bull market. And if you're getting nervous, just go to cash and wait for a pullback. I always suggest leaving some skin in the game in a bull market because you never know exactly how high the market's going to go and you're much less likely to FOMO. So thanks for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.